Let's welcome your former teammate, our colleague here at SNY. Our colleague Keith Hernandez joining us on the telephone line right now. And, and Keith, in the piece we just saw, you said that you didn't want to come and Frank uh, talked you in, into staying. So obviously he had a very big influence and a big impact on your life. Well, uh, first of all, it's a sad day and uh, I love Frank very much. Um, was a great man and is an honest man full of integrity and he always told you the truth which doesn't happen a lot in a lot in most industries um he was a man of honor and i deeply respected him uh the story in that off season uh after 83 when i spent the first half the second half of the season with the mets uh, i was not happy here uh i was also going through some marital problems which wound up in divorce so um it just wasn't a good second half for me. I did okay, but I was not never comfortable. wasn't at home. And Frank, after around three weeks when the season was over, uh, he gave me a call, and he said, Look, Keith, I understand your situation, and I know that you can be a free agent after next year. Uh, we would love to sign you to a long-term deal, uh, but I understand if you want to go somewhere else. Uh, I'll try to trade you. I'd like to trade you. Uh, I'll get some young players for you, and you can go. And I'll try to trade you where you you tell me some where you want to go and be where you might be happy. If it works out, they have players that I can use. I'll try to do that for you. And, he, and I said that's that's fair enough, Frank. And uh, he said I just need to know before the before the winter meetings. He goes they're run three weeks away. If you could let me know. Uh, within you know a week and a half, so I can make plans and start making phone calls. I'd appreciate it. So, in fact, I called him back in around five days and told him I'd stay. What was it, Keith, uh, about him? And uh, you know, I hear it from Bobby. I hear it from you. A great respect for this man. Uh, what, what was it about him? What was the intangible about him that made him so special? Well. His honesty. Uh, Frank was uh, was of the old school. Today's general managers, they're chummy chummy with the players. The general managers were never chummy chummy with us. Frank never came down the clubhouse. We very rarely saw him. He would have uh, every home stand every Sunday. I think Bobby will remember this. He would come down the clubhouse to have a meeting with Davey in his office. And that was a me, and we'd always, I'd always give him a hard time and tell Frank, well, you know, come on, stick around, Frank, and talk with us. And Frank, with that, you know, old frumpiness, would walk by and kind of grunt and go into Davy's office and have around a half hour, 45 minute meeting, and then he'd go back upstairs. There just wasn't that, uh, that, uh, relationship with the general manager, but you had one with Frank, uh, for some reason, uh, even though, I don't think general managers should be chummy chummy with the players today either. But you know things things are different. Uh, players are treated differently. But you just knew that Frank had a good heart. And uh, I have a great story. Uh, we won the seventh game of the World Series, and everybody was out having a good time. And uh, I came into the clubhouse for some reason. I walked underneath the stadium. And I opened the door. I think I might have been ahead of a lot of guys. It was just me. No one was behind me. Frank and I had a moment. He was right there at the door. And we hugged each other. And I said, Frank, we we did it. And he just grinned and laughed and mm -hmm. hugged me as hard as he could. It was just one of the, the best moments I ever had with him. What about the team he put together Keith, that included uh, Bobby, yourself, and, and Daryl, and Doc, and Gary Carter, so many others, uh, uh, so many different personalities, but they all worked, and, and in many ways, he had a vision as to why it would be successful. What was it about that vision that, that came to fruition? Well, you know what's interesting is that Frank wasn't a baseball guy. He was a, started out as a writer in Baltimore, I believe, and then became the general manager of, uh, of Baltimore, the Oriole teams. Uh, back in the Jim Palmer days, so it, you know you don't have to be a baseball guy to be successful. I mean, I think Frank is probably the greatest general manager in New York Met history. Uh, he put that team together, came to that team when ownership, the new ownership, took over with uh, Nelson and and Fred, and basically told them he would he wouldn't take the job unless. They could rebuild and start from scratch and rebuild slowly, and it would be around a four or five year project. And um, he, he pulled it off. 
We got the draft picks were outstanding. I mean, it's, uh, Frank was alive today. Frank would tell you that he he would share the credit with a, a multitude of people in the organization. That draft made the right draft. The scouts, all the way from top to bottom, that brought you Daryl Strawberry, Dwight Gooden, the number one picks that panned out. And then um, what makes separates Frank is that the trades he made to make our club better. And Bobby, Bobby is one of them. Bobby won 18 games, gave us that left-hander. He got Bobby. He got brought Mazzelli back for our bench. Uh, shoot, um, Darling. You know, the list goes on of people that he brought here. Uh, Ray Knight, Sid Fernandez, they were all, David Cohn, all those great trades. I mean, that's what separates Frank. Those were brilliant trades. You know, getting Gary Carter. And uh, really, I didn't think we gave up a whole hell of a lot for Gary. We, we lost Hubie, a very good player, but the other guys they wanted never really kind of panned out and had long careers. Um, stole them, he stole me. So... Uh, that's what separates Frank, and um, uh, I'm just happy that we won for him. I wish we could have won more for him, but this didn't happen. But uh, we got one, and that's all that matters. They can never take that away from us or Frank. Well, I'll tell you what, Keith. I, you know, I have, we all have our memories of Frank. I think when I when I came here after I got traded in the winter of '85, and I got to spring tra- training down there in uh, St. Pete at Huggins Single, beautiful little okay. ballpark, a throwback to the old days. And I first met all you guys, all you maniacs. I remember thinking, "Oh my gosh, this is a group of guys who think alike." who act alike, who conduct themselves alike. And even even the vibe I got after just two weeks there, and if you remember, I didn't talk for a month. I didn't say a word because I didn't know you guys. I didn't, want, I didn't want to tip my hand yet. But then what I saw, what, what amazed me, was that everyone was driven for one thing, and that was to win. Our manager had said, we're going to win. We're going to win. We're going to win handily. And, and the whole collective group in that locker room, when I first walked through that old wooden building, that old little place, I walked in there. The vibe was there. And, I think I think when I look back at Frank and remember what he did, remember what a good man he was, he knew people. He knew how to put guys together who thought alike. He knew how to put guys together who were not individualistic. We didn't have guys who went four for five and we lost, were happy. We didn't have guys who, who lost the game two to one as a pitcher and were happy. He had guys who wanted to win. There was one thing we wanted to do was win. He built that thing on stats, but he, he capped it on character character of guys who wanted to win and that that was what was so impressive to me when I first came here in that spring of 86 and then we went on and 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 had that great fantastic year so I remember that and I do remember when my time ended here as you said when you when he said I'll trade you where it'll it'll make you happy where it'll work well you know what he traded me after 1990 back to LA where I'm from where my family was and I'll never forget that he, he was a good guy. And one more story, uh, Gary, uh, sure. uh, probably the most tender story. Um, when he let Gary and I go the same day, and they weren't going to renew or uh, extend our contracts, and we were both finished, and um, Frank called us up individually, one after the other, into his office, up in the front office. I'd never been in his office. And um, he saw Gary first. And I was waiting out in the, in the outside, and Gary was gone in around 10 minutes. And then when I went in, Frank uh, let me know he was going to the hardest decision of his life. It's, it's uh, blah, 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 but we're going to have to let you go. And I said, Frank, it's okay. It's business. And then he said, I just want to thank you for everything that you did, your dedication to the team that helped so much to turn it around. And then he got up and walked around his desk over to me. I had no idea what he was going to do, and he said, give me a hug. Hmm. And he hugged me and had tears in his eyes. And I didn't know how to react. I was just completely stunned and thrown off guard. But I hugged him back, and he was in tears. And I'll never forget that. That is a good story to cap it off with. Keith, we thank you for spending a few minutes, some recollections, much more coming along the way here on SNY Today. We thank you, Keith. Okay, guys. Thanks, Keith.